And I don't know about you, but one of the things that I'm fascinated with is the planet that we live on. And there's a lot more that we have in common than you may think. In fact, the, the planet that we call home, Earth, is more similar to you and I than you may think. You see, the planet Earth is covered in about 70% water. And we are made up of about 70% water. So given that our body is 70% water, it's a pretty reasonable assumption that the two elements that make up most of our body are hydrogen and oxygen. And while oxygen is number one, hydrogen is not number two. Any guesses on the second most prevalent element? Yeah, carbon. We are carbon-based life forms. So here's a representation of all the elements in the body, and we can see that oxygen and uh, carbon are numbers one and two respectively. Then comes hydrogen, then comes nitrogen, and the rest are trace elements. So really, our body is primarily made up of just four elements. Now, how do we figure out those percentages? Well, those percentages are through something that we call percent composition. And really what percent composition is, is a representation of the relative amounts of each element by mass in a particular substance. So in our case, if we're trying to figure out the percentage by mass of oxygen or carbon or hydrogen, we're, we're comparing that to the overall mass of our body. In chemistry, we use this to establish relationships or even chemical formulas of particular compounds. And so we use this percent composition to establish how much of a particular compound is a particular element. I think the best way to take a look at how we use this in chemistry is to start with an example. So let's take a look at sodium carbonate. Now it's important to understand the formula and have the correct formula for this compound or else we're not going to be able to come up with the right percentages. So knowing our formula for sodium carbonate, we can then take the molar masses of each of the individual components and then use them to figure out the molar mass of the entire compound. Now once we've established the molar mass of the individual components and the molar mass of the entire compound, we can now start to represent these as percentages of the compound. Now what's important to remember is that when you're trying to figure out the overall amount of sodium that's in sodium carbonate, you have to remember that there are two sodiums. So in order to establish the overall mass of sodium in there, we have to do two times the molar mass of the sodium and compare it to the overall mass of sodium carbonate. When we're comparing carbon, there's only one carbon, so we only need to establish the mass of one carbon as compared to the mass of the sodium carbonate. And with oxygen, there are three oxygens, so we have to use the molar mass of three oxygens and compare that with the overall molar mass of sodium carbonate. Now, of course, all of these are represented in percentages, and we can see here, represented by our graph and our calculations, what the overall percentage of each one of these elements is in this sodium carbonate compound. And what we say is that these are the percent compositions for each particular element by mass in these compounds. So in communicating this as a chemist, you would say that we have a compound that's 43% oxygen by mass, 11% carbon by mass, and 45% sodium by mass. And this would of course represent the percent composition of sodium carbonate. Now why is percent composition that important? Well, it allows us to do a couple of things. One, it allows us to establish what's called the empirical and molecular formula of an unknown compound, which is something I'm going to cover in one of the next vlogcasts. But it also allows us to communicate how much of a given sample is made up of a particular element or compound. So for example, if we wanted to communicate the purity of a particular substance or the amount of a particular substance contained within a sample, or if we wanted to talk about the amount of, say, carbon dioxide built up in a confined sample of air. Really what it does is just give us another way of communicating the makeup by mass of a particular compound and the elements within it. So hopefully after watching this video you have a better understanding of what percent composition is, how to calculate percent composition, maybe some more practice using molar mass and molar mass calculations, and also a better appreciation for the number of elements and percentage of elements that you have in your body. Thanks for watching.